Hi there, Doug Stimun with IT Creations. Today we'll be taking a look at the Dell EMC PowerEdge XR2 Industrial Rack Server. This is the new generation of rugged PowerEdge XR enclosures and the successor to the PowerEdge R420XR. This may come as a surprise to you, but not every server room is in a building. These are developed for rugged environments and made to withstand shock, vibration, dust, humidity, and electromagnetic interference. Whether that equates to an EM burst, I don't know. But these are used by the military and for maritime applications and other hot, humid, and generally disagreeable environments. In a nutshell, it supports two scalable processors, eight drive bays, and up to 30 terabytes of storage. Let's take a look. I'll be honest with you. I was expecting it to look a little different, maybe not outside the case, but inside. What I found is that it looks very much like a standard 1U server. However, for such a small size, it does feel quite heavy, with maybe a thicker gauge steel for the chassis surround. Similar to the HPE Edge system, this ruggedized enclosure is for field applications in remote areas where communications with the data center may not be available. It will operate in temperatures up to 45 degrees Celsius, or for the rest of the world that hasn't made the conversion to the metric system, 113 degrees Fahrenheit. It will also handle 55 degrees Celsius, which is 131 degrees for up to eight hours. Hmm. I wonder what happens after eight hours. This 1U server has a short depth of 20 inches for space-constrained environments. It features a nondescript bezel with a control panel on the right side for system health, which we don't have. Apparently it has an integrated filter for dusty environments too. Underneath that bezel, assuming we had one, you'll find eight 2.5 inch drive bays with an on-off button, USB 3.0 port, iDRAC direct port, and iDRAC LED on the right, plus a control panel on the left. Next to the control panel is the system health status button, which will help you isolate failed hardware components with LED icons on the left that include drive temperature, electrical, memory, and PCI system status. The status button may or may not be integrated with an optional quick sync button for ad chassis management of the system using smartphones and tablets. Another panel between the drive and the control panel offers a VGA port, eSATA port, common access card reader, and information tag. Are you interested in the Dell EMC PowerEdge XR2? Because if you are, then for a limited time, you can save up to $500 off the purchase price of a system listed on our site at $5,000 or more. Just click that link to see pricing, and we're ready to make a purchase. Just mention this video. IT Creations carries all the parts and components to custom configure the system to your specifications and set it up for next day delivery. IT Creations also has mission critical services for when the shit hits the fan. Whether it's a critical part or an entire server that goes down over the holiday or the weekend, IT Creations has you covered. Give us a call. Common access cards or CAC cards provide another layer of authentication for data encryption. They allow employees access to company buildings, databases, and other facilities. The common access card is also used by the Department of Defense and provides multi-factor authentication for those serving in the military and for civilian contractors who need access to military hardware. The card stays in the card reader for as long as the system is being used by the card holder. Once removed, the system is inaccessible until another CAT card is inserted. On the back of the system, starting on the left, you'll see a system identification button, a system status indicator cable port, then there's a VGA port with a serial port above that. Next, there's a dedicated iDRAC port, two USB 3.0 ports, and two Ethernet ports, followed by two low-profile PCI slots with a slot for the LAN on motherboard just below for more network interface connection options. On the far end are the dual redundant power supplies, which in this case is limited to 550 watt platinum AC power units. Under the cover, there are two sockets for one or two Intel Xeon scalable processors up to 150 watts each. That first processor provides access to the most memory. The XR2 has a rather unconventional memory arrangement, with four of the six memory channels supporting two memory modules and two of the memory channels with only a single memory module, at least for the first processor. CPU2, on the other hand, supports six memory modules, each in their very own memory channel. CPUs are limited to 150 watts thermal design point to reduce heat buildup. My go-to guys at Anon Tech reviewed this system about two years ago, and at that time it only supported 512 gigabytes using 32 gigabyte memory modules certified for better resistance to temperature variation and moisture. However, Dell now states the system will support a maximum of two terabytes, and that would be using 128 gigabyte memory modules in all slots. I guess the limit of 32 gigabytes on certified memory modules has been lifted, or they're just fine using standard registered or load reduced memory modules. We won't know the answer to that question until they release a new spec sheet. Either way, the capacity currently listed at two terabytes is increased by a factor of four. Memory speed will run at 2666 mega transfers using first generation Intel Xeon scalable processors. There are actually two different storage conditions for this chassis. The chassis we have here supports eight 2.5 inch hot plug SAS or SATA SSDs. 
The other is a high-performance chassis and supports four 2.5-inch SAS or SATA SSDs, plus four hot-plug NVMe drives. SATA and the NVMe drives are supported by a hybrid backplane. With a single processor, an NVMe cable extends to the optional mini perk controller and then to one of the riser slots on the system board for support of two NVMe drives. With two CPUs, all four NVMe drives can be installed and requires the previously mentioned connection plus a second cable from the backplane to the SATA 3 NVMe hybrid port on the motherboard. RAID controllers supported on this system include the mini perk H330, H730P for performance, or the HBA330. One of the interesting things you can get is an OEM debranded or rebranded bezel to include something near and dear to all companies, their logo. For hypervisor support, an optional internal dual SD card module supports one or two SD cards on one side with an optional flash memory card on the other. The second micro SD card is dedicated for redundancy, while the flash memory card can be used by iDRAC for storage. The IDSDM plugs into a dedicated slot on the motherboard. The dedicated port on the back of the system connects to the intelligent platform management interface. System is IPMI compliant, and just like Dell's other next generation servers, this one has iDRAC 9.0 with lifecycle controller for at chassis and remote management of the system. You can also connect directly to the system using the optional QuickSync 2 wireless module. The QuickSync button allows you to temporarily pair a Bluetooth enabled smartphone or tablet to the server through Dell's Open Manage mobile app, or OMM. Operating systems supported include iOS and Android operating systems. Aside from the dedicated slots for the micro SD card module and LOM module, PCIe cards are mounted in either two low profile risers or a single riser like we have here that supports a full height PCIe card. All slots are by 16. There are two integrated one gigabit ethernet NIC ports on the back panel, but you can use an optional LOM riser card for a multitude of connection options. By the way, I'm not sure why this is not referred to as the network daughter card like on all other chassis, but let's move on. The system features an integrated M.2 module that supports two M.2 drives and a hardware RAID to support your operating system. You can also take up one of those PCIe slots with a BOSS that also supports two M.2 SSDs and a hardware RAID for additional super fast storage or for the OS. Just one 75 watt single wide NVIDIA Tesla T4 GPU is supported and only in riser slot two. If you will not be installing the GPU, then leave the plastic bracket. These ruggedized chassis have several key features that differentiate them from your run of the mill servers. Ability to withstand extreme temperatures, extreme elevations, designed for compact spaces with a 20 inch server depth. If you need to load this server into your van or need to take it on that around the world tour in your paddle boat, look to the Dell EMC PowerEdge XR2. We hope you enjoyed our short hardware review of the relatively new XR2. If you have any questions on this server or any other, post them in the comments section below. IT Creations carries a full range of servers, storage enclosures, switches, plus processors, memory, GPUs, and hundreds of thousands of other parts. If you're looking for hardware, try IT Creations. Like, subscribe, and comment. I'm Doug Stuman with IT Creations, and thanks for watching.